In this episode of Get Real with Rajiv, I'm going to answer for you questions like how do you avoid procrastination? How do you build the right team with the common goal and a common mindset? How do you make sure that you have the right business idea? And what is a better scale up strategy? Should you acquire or should you build yourself? Hello everyone and welcome to Get Real with Rajiv episode number 29. We're going to be answering four questions in today's episode like we do in every single episode and Pawan's going to be the voice of your questions today. So Pawan, shoot the first question. The first question is from Gaurav Kundu on Facebook. He asks, how to find teammates or people in particular with a common mindset or a common goal to oneself? Well Gaurav, you've asked a question that I think every entrepreneur has. Where do I find people who have the right mindset and who align to my goals so that we have common goals as a business and as a team? Gaurav, let me answer that question to you, my friend. You can't find such people. There is no such thing as ready-made talent. You will never ever find a college, university or a recruitment agency who can source such candidates who are made to fit for your organization. Having said that, here's what you need to understand. If you want people with the right mindset and if you want people who have a common goal like yourself, then you need to get two parts right. One part is the hiring exercise. The second part is the team building exercise. For the hiring exercise to be accurate or for the hiring exercises efficiency to be high, you need to have clarity of what tasks and activities are you hiring for? What is the role document that you're hiring for? So firstly, create a role document with clear tasks and activities that you expect a person to perform while you hire them for a particular job. Second, you need to break down those tasks and activities further into skills, knowledge and attitude a person needs to have to be able to perform that job successfully. Third, when you're sourcing candidates, you got to market aggressively and use multiple channels so that you reach out to the relevant talent pool. Now, if you're hiring freshers, then you need to know what are the kind of universities and campuses you need to go out there and hire from. And if you're hiring experienced people, then you need to know what are the competitors or places or organizations these people should have worked in so that you target those organizations through recruitment agencies or through digital hiring and you source such candidates. Now, when you are in the interviewing process, at that time, your job is to gather evidence whether this person has the required skills, knowledge and attitude for the tasks and activities of the job role. For this, you have to prepare a strong interviewing process. You need to prepare your questions. You need to prepare the tasks and assignments you will give them, which will truly test them out and give you enough evidence to see whether they fit in the job or not. So that's the first part of the exercise. The second part is when once you've hired people, please understand your job does not end at hiring. A mistake a lot of entrepreneurs make is once they hire, they feel their job is done. No, your job starts after you have hired. This is where you have to align personal goals with organization goals. And for that, you need to first understand people's personal aspirations. And once you've understood their personal aspirations, you need to align it to the business aspirations by giving them tasks and activities that meet both interests. And through the process, you have to train, coach, mentor, develop your team members so that they are gaining value by working at your workplace. That's how the common mindset and the right attitude is built. So all I'm trying to say, Gaurav, is that this is a process of nurturing. If I have to break it down, I would say there it has four stages to it. The first stage is mining. You know, when you mine, you just keep digging, 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 digging. That's the hiring. You are always hiring, looking for more and more people. So first is mining. Second is defining you got to define clear skills clear knowledge clear tasks that you're hiring people for so you can then start matching and eliminating people who don't fit the third stage is refining once you've selected and you refine people and you brought them on board then you go to the fourth stage which is shining this is where you develop train coach mentor people and you shine them like a diamond so you need to understand that's how diamonds are created mining then refining defining and then shining so you got to use the same approach my friend i hope that is useful let's go to the second question pawan the second question is from nitin sharma on linkedin is it necessary that a business idea should always be new or innovative or does a regular business also work comes with uh, within the reach of our calculated risks and resources too well nitin um while there is a lot of talk and hype about tech innovation startups scalability value creation all of these terminologies have overwhelmed even aspiring entrepreneurs where they start doubting themselves if they are starting the right business or not so according to me 
a business idea can be generated based on two things and either of the two things it's fine one you could start a business based on your expertise this is why you have skills and knowledge that are unique to you and you know by using these skills and knowledge you can add massive value to a specific target audience now this is where you either start a, a, a tech platform or any business which is based on your unique skills and knowledge the other way of coming up with a business idea is to start a business based on an opportunity. You may not have unique skills and knowledge, but there's an obvious opportunity. Let's just say a, a tech park comes up in a locality and there are no restaurants in their area. There's no tea shop in their area. Now, starting a tea shop may not be the most unique idea, but because the opportunity is so large there, because you have thousands of employees who are working there and they need some place to consume tea and coffee and you start a tea corner there, you will still make money. So you need to ask yourself, am I starting my business based on my unique skills and knowledge, which is my expertise, or am I starting business based on an opportunity that is obvious and visible? If you are able to start a business on either of these grounds, I foresee that you will make a good amount of money and you will make sure that you are, you are fulfilling your aspiration of being an entrepreneur. So don't get overwhelmed by the fact that, okay, I don't come from a tech background. Everybody's talk, talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning. I don't understand any of these things. People are talking about cryptocurrency. I don't have capabilities. Does that mean I cannot be an entrepreneur in today's day and age? No, that is not true. If you don't have those expertise, then look at an opportunity. Either ways, a business that starts on expertise or opportunity, both can make money. There's no right way, there's no wrong way if you're able to meet at least one of these approaches. I hope that satisfies and gives your soul some peace of mind, my friend, because I realize that somewhere in your question, the doubt was more about, I don't have any such unique capabilities based on what I'm hearing in the market today. You don't need unique capabilities, find an opportunity. Do it either way. Let's go to the third question, Pawan. The third question is from Pradeep Kumar on LinkedIn. When a new player entering the market on best product or service, what's your suggestion? To go with a startup and scale up or acquire any existing weak player and then scale up? Why? Well, Pradeep, um, acquisition is definitely a, a faster growth strategy provided the weakness of the person you are hiring is a strength for you and your weaknesses are a strength for them. What do I mean by that? If I'm starting a company, uh, if I'm launching a product in the market and I need to, I have the option of acquiring, say, another business and that business has been operating for a long time, but they are not doing well for themselves. And if I see that, hey, you know what, my strength is developing the product. I need someone who comes with the strength of having a channel for marketing and sales. And if I find a business that has a channel for marketing and sales and their pain area is that they don't have the right product, then it's a match made in heaven. Then it's a perfect uh, synergy for an acquisition. But if let's just say my challenge is marketing and sales and I have a great product with myself and I go and acquire a company who also has a great product but sucks at marketing and sales, then that's like two blind men going on a blind date. Okay, that's going to be painful. So please understand this. Acquisition is great, provided there is evidence of complementary skills and capabilities. If you do not find such a company to acquire with complementary skills and capabilities, then the only option left is build those capabilities internally and scale up. I hope that answer makes sense, Pradeep, to you. Let's go to the fourth question. The fourth question is from Naveen Toriyappa on Facebook. He asks, how to overcome procrastination? Well, Naveen, that's such a universal question that you've asked me, my friend. So I thought, let me give you a, as specific an answer that I can give and not a universal answer. Let's firstly understand why do people procrastinate? People procrastinate, number one reason, is when they don't have the required skills and knowledge to do a particular task. So when you're not good at doing something, natural human behavior is to delay it and defer it and procrastinate it and say to yourself okay i'll do this later so if your reason for procrastination is lack of skill and knowledge then acquire the skill and knowledge because when you acquire the skill and knowledge you acquire the confidence and conviction to be able to do something well and when you have that confidence and conviction then you don't have any more excuse or reason left to procrastinate that task or activity so that's one reason of procrastination which is lack of skill and knowledge the other reason why people 
प्रोक्रेस्टिनेट इज लैक ऑफ विलिंगनेस और जेन्यून एक्साइटमेंट टू डू समथिंग रिमेंबर दिस वी ऑलवेज फाइंड द टाइम टू डू समथिंग दैट वी आर एक्साइटेड टू डू and we always find reasons and excuses to not do something that we are not excited about doing so you need to question your intent and willingness do i really want to do what i i claim i want to do like a lot of people say i want to join the gym and lose weight now in all honesty that statement means nothing to them and that's why they don't join the gym and that's why they don't lose weight they pretend like they want to lose weight but they're not committed to losing weight remember this our actions always reveal our inner priorities if something is a true inner priority for me i will figure a way out i will not procrastinate it but if something is not genuinely uh, a priority for me something that doesn't excite me then i will always find excuses for it so two ways of avoiding procrastination firstly identify the the root cause of why you are procrastinating is it because of lack of skill and knowledge then acquire the skill of knowledge is it because that you are procrastinating because of lack of willingness and intent then question the intent and either make the intent stronger so that you can go out there and do it or just come to terms with yourself and accept that hey you know what losing weight is not important to me making money is not important to me and just find peace with yourself rather than having this internal conflict of procrastination all the time for me procrastination is only a symptom uh, the real problem is intent or skill and knowledge so i hope that gives you clarity on how to work on your own procrastination my friend so with that we have come to the end of episode number 29 of get real with rajiv where i've answered four questions for you guys comes to that point in this episode where we need to pick a winner for the question of the week who receives a copy of my book lead obli so pawan who according to you okay uh pawan says a particular number today i don't agree to pawan so i'm going to give it to the universal question that was asked today which was navin question number 4 on how do you deal with procrastination thank you for asking such a universal question and i hope a lot of people got value out of what i shared on procrastination thanks to your question navin so you're going to get a copy of my book lead or bleed my team is going to reach out to you and get your address and details and send you a copy of my book lead or bleed enjoy the read don't procrastinate reading that book and for the rest of you you have an important task ask more questions that i can answer in this get real with rajiv episodes in the comments below and if you like what i do then share this video spread the knowledge to as many people as possible with that this is rajiv talreja signing off i look forward to seeing you in my next episode